Hey guys, this is JB with Dallas Jamming, and today we're going to be looking at the Strymon Magneto, a stereo forehead digital tape echo and looper. Strymon is known for making guitar pedals, but Magneto is the first plunge into Eurorack effects, and what a welcome one it's been by the synth community. So let's take a look at our ins and outs. To the left, we have a left and right input, followed by their designated outs. We have a send output that sends our delay repeats to be processed by other devices. A return output, which sends back the signal to be mixed with the dry input signal. A clock input, which works in quarter notes. A record gate input, which toggles the record head on and off. Shift toggles the shift effect for the playback head on and off. Infinite toggles the infinite transport control on and off. We have CB for reverse, restart, and pause. Tap says the delay time when in echo mode. In loop mode, it says splice in, out, and clear. In sample mode, it says the sample record start, stop, and clear. CV input for the spring reverb, CV input for the tape speed, CV input for the wet signal, CV input for repeats, and a clock output, each belonging to the four playback heads. I'm going to send the audio out of my rings into my left input, and the audio out of my plonk into my right input, then both left and right outs into my mixer. Now let's talk knobs. The drive knob controls our input signal. You can think of it as your volume knob. When in echo mode, Magneto is a forehead tape delay with four playback heads and one record head. The wet knob sets the overall delay signal which is then sent to the output. I love creating a heavy ambient atmosphere with Magneto by setting the dry knob as low as possible and increasing the wet knob amount. The giant knob in the middle controls our tape speed, which can intensely affect our pitch. The repeat knob controls the feedback level of the delay repeats for the tape heads. The record level knob controls the level of the incoming and process signal that is fed into the delay line record head. It's easy to get dark distorted sounds by increasing the record knob amount creating a saturation effect. In other words, yes, this pedal can get dirty if you're into that. To the left, you will find a small switch that controls the playback head spacing when in echo mode. The top option is even, which sets the playback head with an even spacing between each other. The middle option is triplet, which sets the playback heads with triplet spacing between each other. The third option is shift, which changes the playback speed of each of the four playback heads with very speed, which causes shifted delay repeats. To the right, there's another switch. This one controls our panning settings. The first option pans tape 1 and 4 100% to the left, and tape 2 and 3 100% to the right. When the switch is centered, we get a cycloacoustic stereo image. When the switch is all the way down, tape heads 1 and 3 are panned 100% to the left, and tape heads 2 and 4 are panned 100% to the right. Loka controls the low frequency shaping of the echo repeats. The tape H knob controls our tape bandwidth. At minimum, we get full bandwidth. In the middle, we get warmer repeats. And at maximum, it creates a peaking filter response with high feedback. Crinkle controls the friction, creases, and splices of our tape.
while in Flutter, control the amount of tape speed fluctuations. On its lowest setting, we get a perfectly tuned tape machine, while at its highest setting, we really hear that wow in Flutter. Now let's listen to the slush spring reverb. Pro tip, there's a switch on the back of the module that allows you to split the delay and reverb signals into each output, but the original setting feeds the delay signal into the spring reverb which seems like the most preferred setting. So lush. Now it's time for some modulation. I'm going to send CD into my speed which causes a slight pitch drift. CD into my wet signal. CV into my repeats. Another cool thing we can do with Magneto is self-patch it. Let's send clock output 1 into the shift and see what we get. We can hear a bit of stepping in between notes. Pro tip, you can use your 4 clock outputs for voltage control on other gear. Things can get pretty interesting just by patching my needle into itself though. Okay, let's clear things up a bit and stop our sequencer. This is insane. What you're hearing right now is only Magneto and the delays that remain from our sequence. This is crazy. That was like a trip to a magical forest and back. What? Okay, back to our tutorial. Nice little intermission we had there.
When the LED is on amber, we enter looper mode. Make sure feedback 4 is lit and press tab to start the looper. Once again to stop it. Tape heads 1 and 3 provide delay repeats for the incoming signal. When in loop and sample mode, the maximum time between our start and end points is defined by the pitch knob. Now let's check out sample mode, which is the red LED. To start sampling, press tap. Once again to stop, once again to clear. Turn transport on. To play your loop, press the restart button. A gate can make our loop re-trigger, but so can our clock outs. Now we can mangle and tangle our sample as we please. Hold transport and turn the pitch knob to scroll through the 15 available scales. This is McNeedle's self-oscillate mode. I'm having a lot of fun exploring this module and it's definitely full of nice surprises. Let me know what you think of Magneto if you have one or plan to add it to your setup. That's it for today guys, if you enjoyed this tutorial, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and support our sister on Patreon for more tutorials and reviews. Catch you later!